hey guys welcome back today I want to show you how to turn a skeleton into a decaying skeleton all right I'm using these little skeletons I got from Dollar Tree they come four in a pack and they look like this all right so the very first thing you have to do is you have to remove the string that's on the top of the head Watch, don't cut your finger. All right, after that, I like to take the torch and soften the edges of my skeleton. If you don't know how to do that, go ahead and go back to the tutorial where I show you how to bend the skeletons and stuff, and then that'll show you exactly how I get my skeletons mobile without actually breaking the parts off of them, okay? After that, I went ahead and got some water and glue mixture going. Now, this one's from last night, so it's a little bit thicker, so it's been sitting here for a while. But I went ahead and did um, three parts glue, one part water, and it makes it a little bit runny. Not quite as runny as Mod Podge would be, but um, it's definitely there. After that, and this is going to get messy... You're going to take some toilet paper that has very little pattern to it, okay? And when I say pattern is you don't want like the little flowery designs that, you know, some of the thicker toilet paper has. And you want like the cheapest kind that you can get. Like this is a Sam's Club brand. Um, Scott is also very thin. I mean, like you see, it's like super, super thin. A lot of the toilet paper that's for like RBN and stuff like that is really thin. So, after you do that, you can start out with a big piece, or you can kind of tear it up and do little pieces of it, whichever you prefer. All right, now that I've softened all of his edges to where he had some, like, scradriglies and whatnot on there, I decided to go ahead and do the next step. He's still a little warm, but you can apply this with a... Uh, popsicle stick or you can use a paintbrush but if you use a paintbrush and you don't get the glue out of it it's not gonna um, do well when you try to paint with it again all right so I'm just going to apply this here along the skeleton's chest and what it is is you want to fill in these spots so it looks like there's skin there you know because skin you can see some of the ribs and some you can't So, once you have that done, then you want to apply your toilet paper. Let it just kind of get right in there. You can re-wet it with a stick if you don't want to use your fingers because it will start to stick on your fingers. And then it should pull off fairly easy once you get it going. Now you want to repeat this process and do layers of this. Now I'm going to take some of the smaller pieces that I had cut earlier and I'm just going to kind of go up around his neck a little bit. Push it in as much as I can. And 
And when I'm going up underneath of it, I am putting the popsicle stick so it tears it off at the rib cage. All right, now that's all you do for covering the skeleton and getting him to stick. Wherever you want flesh, that's what you're going to do to get it to go like that. And then when it dries, it's going to have a little layer of skin here. And you can go over it again if you like and add more to where you don't see all the ribs. And you can put chunks of skin like I did up here. And then you can also um, have it go down the arm where it looks like it's a little bit more skin. Put it on the head. And, you know, continue that process. And mind you, the thicker you do it, the um, more you're going to see. Now, if you notice right here, I have some that's kind of like just a piece there. I wanted that like that so it looks like it's decaying. Now, this is a lengthy process because you have to let it dry. This has been drying since um, yesterday and it still isn't dry because it's pretty thick. Now, to get the tissue really thick up here, I will tell you what I did was I took one square of toilet paper and I folded it in half and then half again, and then in half the other way. And I just twisted it like that. And then I tucked it into the rib cage, and then I applied it with glue. Let me get another one out of here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I put this down in here. Hmm, I need another popsicle stick. And then I just bent it over the shoulder and glued it. Now you can do it with the thick end in and it having it come out like that, or you can put the thick end out, whichever way you want. And it's basically um going to simulate the fact that it's got like skin there and then you glue it and then when you glue it it ends up like this where it looks like there's a little bit of skin here I'm going to try and paint this see what it looks like um, I'm not sure if I'm going to add more to it or not if I don't like the way it turns out the great thing is is I can always apply more to it where I want it and then I can um, turn around and re you know Put the paint where I want it and have the dead skin where I want it like it was removed or decayed. Okay. And this is messy. Like if you don't apply it with a stick, it will stick to your fingers and you will be pulling off more than you want. Okay. So you need to find the colors you want. Okay. For now, I'm going to start out with some lighter colors and then I'll go darker as I get along if I want to. I've used the cream, the orange, and then the purple. And I just mixed them together until I got like this um, pasty color. You can do whatever you want. You can just use the brown if you want. But I'm going to go darker at first. That way I can simulate some um, blood tissue. I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's not what it would really look like. I have no idea. I don't really go around looking at dead bodies. But this is what I'm going to assume it would kind of sort of look like. And then after I age it, then hopefully it'll fall into play. I don't know if it will or not. And I'm only going to paint where the tissue is, not the whole skeleton.
All right, so here's where I am so far um, with this. Looks like a lot of tissue. Now, mind you, when you get your toilet paper wet, it may move, so don't press on it too hard because, like, right here in this little delicate area, you want to keep that little fringe of skin laying there. And I'm going to let it dry. When it dries, I'm going to come back and do it again. Also, just so you know, you want to do a little test piece on your toilet paper, like just kind of paint a little section. Because the next step, you want to see how the colors are going to look before you actually put them on your skeleton. All right, while that one is drying, I'm going to play around with this one a little bit. I started putting some on his head. And as you can see, the toilet paper just kind of mushes up a lot when you're playing around with it. So I've got my mixture and I want to kind of make it look like his skin is going down on his neck. Okay, so now, see how it looks like it's like dragging down at the neck? That's what I want. And I'm not filling every gap with it, like, because I want it to look like it's torn. So I'm going to pull that away a little bit. You want to finish off that edge where it's straight by picking at it a little bit so it doesn't look like it's straight. Then I'm going to take a smaller piece and I'm going to attach it to the back of the neck. Well, I would attach to the back of the neck if I could get it to let go with a popsicle stick. There we go. Now I'm just kind of dragging my finger down with the popsicle stick. So I have like lines going down when it dries. I just kind of wrap that around it a little bit there. And then I broke it up a little bit so you can see the bones.
what and then I'm just going to continue this process throughout the skeleton. And if you want to see more ribs, you can poke at it and remove some. Because once it's on there, it'll come off as long as it's wet. Because it's just tissue paper and it pulls right off. Okay. And you can do multiple layers. Okay, just like that, and I'm going to put that on there. Then I'm going to kind of wet that a little bit and try and tear that without tearing all of it. That way you can still see the exposed bone. And then I'm going to let him dry, and I'm not going to mess with him anymore until afterwards. And if you notice, I've got skin on his face right there. Okay, now I'm going to get myself some black and some red. Very, very fine brush. Okay, and I'm going to just do a little bit of a test with a little bit of black and a little bit of red. do is I want to take that and I just want to kind of dry brush Now, 
I'm just trying to simulate maybe some veins and stuff that's running through the tissue. Never done it before, so hopefully it turns out. Um, we'll be doing it together on this one. Here is what I've done. I just went ahead and added some blood. And as you can see, here is the skeleton. And that's what his arm used to look like. And I've added the tissue and everything to kind of make him um, look more like he's got dead skin hanging off of him or decay decaying skin. I'm not sure if I'm going to add some more tissue to his head because I think his head needs a little bit more like I did the other guy who's still drying. Um, but I kind of like him. I did a little bit more blood and um, veins there. I may add a couple little blue spots. I'm not sure yet. But that's what he's going to look like as of this moment. Alright, so I decided to go ahead and try some blue. I don't know if I'm going to like it or not, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. Because um, when you look at images of decaying skin on the internet, it's got a little bit of blue and red. Simulate the arteries and veins and stuff like that. I'm just going to do a tiny bit. I don't know if you can really even see that on camera if it's picking it up, but just doing a very, very light hues of the blue. And I mix some blue with some black to make it darker. You could probably even take some string and attach it the same way we did the toilet paper and then um, use that as veins as well or parts of the body that's running with tissue and stuff like that. Just kind of do like a piece of thread from like here to here or something and have it like a 3D dimensional effect. But this is what he looks like so far, and I'm not sure um, if I should do anything else to him or not. I'll probably sit here and stare at him and let him dry completely, then I'll come back to him, and if I decide, then I'll put it in a different video. Or if it's not too much I added that's different than this, I'll just post pictures on my Facebook page and on my website. So check that out, Dollhouse Miniature Madness and Tutorials, and uh, dollhousetutorials.com. There you go kind of what he looks like. Uh, don't want to overdo it, but he's definitely looking kind of dead. I think he might need some darkness in his face, though, a little bit. So I may add a little bit of dark paint to his face. All right, so I took some of the same cream color. It was like a skin tone, and I mixed it in with some black to give it a little bit of a dark texture. Because his face just looks too bright to me. I think I might even need to add a little bit more darkness because I don't think that quite cuts it. So what I did is I just put some black in with his teeth and then I blotted it off the top of it so you could kind of still see his teeth. Just like that. See how his teeth are? And now I'm going to blot it off the surface so it kind of gives his teeth a little bit of depth. Okay, so I decided to go ahead and add some more tissue to his face. I didn't think it had enough contour once I started painting it. I didn't think it looked right, so... I'm going to let him dry and then I'll come back and repaint this little guy's head. I'm not sure how that little nose thing I'm trying to do there is going to turn out, but we'll see. This is all just testing to see how it goes. Um, I've never done a haunted house before, so this is going to be interesting to see 
how it ends up. If you guys haven't seen the skeleton that I did coming out of the wall, you should check that video out because that's kind of cool. That one turned out pretty interesting. However, I'm not very happy with the fabric on that, so I may go back and do some kind of technique over top of the fabric. It's still a cool effect. All right, so there, I'm going to leave that like that, but I'm also going to add a couple of little hairs coming out of his head while he's still um, wet. And I'm bunching this up a little bit right here on his head just to give it a little bit more um, depth. So I'm going to do a little bit more hair. And you can actually take your hair and put it wherever you want. Um, if you decide to do hair. And I'm going to cut this and trim it down once it's dry. I have to say, on a scale of 1 to 10 for the messiest projects I don't have done, I think this is probably right up there with the worst. Now I'm putting an indentation right here because I don't want all that there. I'm going to pull that across his eyelid a little bit to make him look like he's uh, got skin falling over his eye. I'm going to put one more layer of tissue paper on his head. Then we're going to let him dry and he's probably going to take another day or so to dry. So 
I will finish him up with this section of his body. And remember, um, if you want it over his head, you got to do it while it's wet. Or you're going to have to add another layer. But I'll probably finish this up with part two um, soon. But he's got to dry. I'm going to cut some of this hair out of the way so that it's not in the way. And then he'll look like a little old man with his hair falling out. Alright, well thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, leave a question, suggestion, or comment below. And I will see you in part two of this guy.